The Lord be with you. Welcome. Come and worship as we join together on this Worldwide Communion Sunday. We join our hands with others around the world today as we come to our Lord's table for the sacrament of Holy Communion. If you're joining us online, we invite you to pause to prepare your sacred elements so that you can join us at the Lord's table later in the service. Welcome to all of you here this morning. And we want to thank those who are making our virtual service available, Ken and Bill and Val and Andrew and, and Alana. Thank you for your, your work in preparing the online service. As we gather this morning, we acknowledge your presence on the ancestral land of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe people. May we be mindful of the obligations to care for and protect the land that sustains us. We join together now in a responsive call to worship. We come as guests invited to a table. We come to celebrate with friends and neighbors. Jesus Christ, our friend and savior, invites us to gather. We gather with friends around the world. Come and worship with hearts full of God's praise and promise. We worship God in gladness, for God's faithfulness endures forever. And a few announcements just to, to share with you this morning. Our Sunday school is, is, is on, and we invite our boys and girls to join us. It's Worldwide Communion Sunday, and it's also our Food Bank Sunday today. And we congratulate those celebrating birthdays this week, and they include Ken and Kathy uh, from this congregation. So congratulations, Ken. Thanksgiving decorating will take place next Saturday morning at, at 10 o'clock right here in, in, in Newburgh. If you have time to come out or if you have some produce that you would like to share with us uh, for our service on su Sunday, by all means, if you could have them here by 10 a.m. Thank you. Newburgh anniversary is coming up two weeks from today on October the 16th, and we will be having a combined service with Centerville. And as part of that anniversary celebration, we're pleased that Melodia will be joining us. They are a 20 plus piece choir with members even as far away as Gananoque. And Melodia is directed by Stella Claire to Hart, a very accomplished uh, leader. So we look forward to having them with us. And a reminder on the 15th, we're hoping for a, a, a warm sunny day as we want to uh, scrape and paint the mats uh, next door here and get that, that all done. So let's invite members of both churches to join us in that, in that task. The Central Ontario Regional website is available uh, for you to also link and see what's happening in our region. Any other announcements this morning? Our opening hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King, 217 or on the screen. Let us raise our voices.
hearts together now in prayer as we join together in the prayer of approach and confession. Gracious and generous God, you spread a banquet table and make room for all to come, friend and foe, healed and sick, hopeful and hopeless. You feed our desires with goodness and fill our longing with steadfast love. We worship you with grateful praise, together with all your people, here and everywhere, who break bread at your table and who share the cup. We celebrate our life together in Christ and offer our love and loyalty to you. God of mercy and mystery, when you invite us to your table, you ask us to come with clean hands and open hearts. You ask us to come in peace, seeking reconciliation with you and with each other. In this silence, we hand over to you the broken relationships, disagreements and disappointments that keep us from living in your peace. Free us from the burdens we carry, which we share in this silence. Lord God, receive these prayers of our hearts so that we may be a source of peace in this troubled world. Amen. Hear and believe the good news. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven. Have the courage to forgive one another and be at peace with God with your neighbor, and with yourself. Amen. I am pleased that Hillary and Morgan are with us this morning. Girls, if, if you, I would invite you to come forward, and with you, would you bring a red hymn book? You'll find them in the pews, the red ones. If you could bring one of those with you, that would be great. like to have a seat there we will open the hymn book we need to find page 266 in your hymn book do you think we can do that Hillary can you that's a big number can you find it in there 266 there we go it's a familiar hymn but what we're looking at today is um, all the languages that it is written in I just remembered my little book I got it just read So if you open up to 266, you'll see the words in English. The hymn is entitled Amazing Grace, and the first version is printed in English. And then if you turn the page, you'll see the words printed in French. And some of you maybe, did you take French at school yet, Hillary? Did you do a little French in school? Not yet, not yet. Probably grade one. French is a is an official language in at least 29 countries in the world. And after French, you'll see Cree. And Cree is a, an Algonquinian a language spoken by about 117,000 people across Canada and the Northwest Territories and Alberta and Labrador. And Mohawk is the next language, and it's an Iroquoian language as well, and people uh, speak it. Uh, in Haudenosaunee territories in Canada, Ontario, and Quebec. Mm -hmm. Next is Ojibwe language. My goodness, there's so many languages. Ojibwe. Ojibwe is an indigenous language in North America uh, of the Algonquinian language family. And then you'll see another one, the Inuktitut. Uh, Inuk means person, and Tutut means like or in manner of. So it's one of the Inuit languages that's spoken of in, in past the tree line. So in Newfoundland, in Labrador, some areas of Quebec, northern Manitoba, 
and the territories, and of course, Nineveh. And then, the next one, Chinese. Again, Chinese, many minority ethnic groups in greater China speak Chinese, about 1.3 billion people, approximately 16% of the world's population speak a variety of Chinese as their first language. And then, the next language, the last one here, Japanese. Japanese is, is spoken natively by about 128 million people, and primarily by Japanese people who live in Japan. So those, this one song, Amazing Grace, we can sing it in English, French, Cree, Mohawk, Inuktitut, Chinese, Japanese, all, all included there. Now, I want you to turn to, let me see, page, oh my goodness, 646, 646, and we're going to sing this in just a minute, but I want to, want to show you something about this song. As we mentioned already in the service, and as you can see from the table here, today is, is Communion Sunday. We have the elements of bread and wine, and we think about Jesus dying on the cross and rising again, and the symbols represent his, his life and his death and his resurrection. And we celebrate uh, with, with thanksgiving and joy in our hearts what Jesus has done for us. And today we call it Worldwide Sunday, which means Worldwide Communion Sunday, which means people from, from the places that we've mentioned here and many other places all across the world, Christians will be coming to our Lord's table and they will be uh, doing just what we will do, taking a little bit of bread and a little bit of juice or wine and remembering and giving thanks to God for what Christ has done in dying and rising for us. So even though we speak many different languages, we, we share in the same faith and in the same God, and we commune at his table in the same way. I remember when I was in India, when I, when I had communion in India, I knelt on my knees to receive communion. And today we receive communion by sitting in our pews. So people may do it differently, but the meaning, no matter what language they speak or where they are in the world, the meaning is the same. And it speaks of God's love for us and what he's willing to do for us and the hope he gives us. The song we're going to sing in just a minute is um, We Are Marching or Sia Humba, which is uh, an African language. And if you look at the second verse, it is written in, a, in the African language. And the words are Sia Humba Kuku Nani Quin Kos. Sia Humba Nunu Kan Quin. Nunu, nunu Quin, nu, nu, na, say it again. See a humba cuckoo nanny quincos. See a humba cuckoo nanny quincos. I practiced that a whole lot this week. Yeah. And that's the language. So they're singing uh, in their language the words that we are singing in our language of English. We are marching in the light of God, which all of us, all of us do. The light of God is love for us. We're marching together. And just before we sing that, I, I, this, I'm going to send this this storybook downstairs with you for Sunday school today. It's a book entitled, If Kids, and I think it's Rule of the World, um, by Leo and Diane Dillon. And on this particular page, you see boys and girls from all different nationalities, uh, dressed in many different uh, traditional clothing, coming together. And, and what are they doing? Do you see what they're doing with their hands? What are they doing with their hands? What are they doing? You see them? See their hands? They're holding hands together. Look at that. They're all holding hands. And that's how I picture today as all of us come together for Worldwide Communion Sunday, holding hands. And together, all of us form um, the body of Christ, God's love, his kingdom here on earth. And that's, that's what we want the world to look like. People together of all different cultures holding hands and, and worshiping together. So I'm going to give that to Lorraine if you want to read that or look at that downstairs by all means. Okay, we are marching, 646. Uh, we'll sing this through twice and if you uh, wish to sing it, the second verse, 
in the African language, by all means, we'd love to hear you sing that, okay? We are marching. page 782 in Voices United or on the screen. We will be, David will play the refrain once, the second time we will sing and then we will start the reading. Second reading 
is from John chapter 6, verse 35, 41 to 51. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that came down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that come, came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God of hope, amid all the concerns in the world around us, we turn to you, to your word. Send your Holy Spirit to still our, our hearts and minds and to receive now your wisdom for us. Fill us with the humble confidence we meet in Jesus Christ, your living word. May these thoughts and words prepared speak your truth and speak it so in love. In Christ and in Christ we pray. Amen. I want us to think about bread for a moment. We have bread sitting before us. Uh, bread often called the, the staff of life. Water and bread uh, sort of are the staples of a uh, human diet, human existence. Mahatma Gandhi stated, There are people in the world so hungry that God cannot appear to them except in the form of bread. In other words, their physical hunger is so powerful that it must be addressed if they are able to open to anything else in, in life. That's hard to imagine. I want you to recall with me for a moment some passages of Scripture beginning in the Old Testament involving bread. Recall the Israelites complained to Moses about the prospect of starving in the wilderness. Slavery in Egypt was horrific, but as they, they wander to freedom in, in the wilderness, they're wondering if it's worth it, if, if they're going to die in the desert. They're hungry. God answered their prayers with manna, and later water from the rock of, of, from the rock of Horeb. With their most basic needs addressed, they were then able to, to carry on with their journey towards the promised land. This physical bread, although it's, it, it's essential to our lives, it isn't sufficient for abundant, abundant life. When Jesus concluded his 40 days in the wilderness, he was undoubtedly ravenous. But when the tempter suggested that Jesus turn the stones into bread, he answered, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Even in that very uh, weak and vulner vulnerable state, he would not give in to, to, to the tempter and to, and to the bread. Now just days after Jesus' resurrection, or crucifixion, pardon me, after his crucifixion, there were rumors that Jesus might be alive. Two of his disciples were way, making their way to, to Emmaus. The rumors were not convincing to them, and as they walked along, their heads hung low, their hearts were full of sorrow because uh, the one whom they had believed in and trusted in and placed their hope in 
was dead. As they walked, a man joined them who didn't seem to know anything about the details that had been experienced in Jerusalem. But the man's understanding of the scriptures brought a, a feeling of, of, of great peace into their hearts. They invited the man to join them. And he did. And it was when, what? When in the breaking of the bread that their eyes were open and they realized he was no longer dead. That he was truly alive again. It was in the breaking of the bread. While out on a hillside after a long day, Jesus fed 5,000 people with a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. This is a story that, that begins with a scarcity of food and ends with great abundance. This is so with spiritual bread too. The story of how Jesus satisfied their physical hunger is included in all four of the gospel accounts. In John's account in chapter 6, the story continues on and it shares with us how the people returned the following day looking for another meal. They followed him. They were hoping for perhaps a, another reoccurrence of, of the day before. And in exchange for the physical bread, they are, they voice the fact that they are willing to grant their commitment to Jesus and to his mission. But they're not quite fully understanding what Jesus is saying here. The, the bread that Jesus offers them is himself, and he invites them to take nourishment in him. Because the physical bread, while it sustains us temporarily, it cannot sustain us for eternity. The people are confused, they're kind of disappointed, they, they were looking for another meal, they were caught up in, in the literal and couldn't get that the, while the bread is significant, no one can live on bread alone. Jesus offered himself as the word that sustains the spirit, bringing life in all its fullness. The physical bread, of course, is easier to grasp, but it's the spiritual bread, Jesus Christ, the spiritual food, that sustains us forever. And Jesus said to the crowd before him, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Placed on the table before us now is the bread and the cup. They are placed there as a reminder that God is here, that God is with us and in us, strengthening and encouraging us to continue the journey to the promised land. On this Worldwide Communion Sunday, we come to the table with, with millions of other Christians who are responding to, to their call to come and receive the bread of life. We find union together with God and, and one another as we gather around the one table of our Lord, forming the body of Christ. Inclusive of, of differences of ethnicity, sexual orientation, age, or economic status, and any and other all differences. We come together as one, forming the body of Christ. No distinctions, no divisions, all one. We all receive equally the same symbols, the same symbols of sacrifice for each one of us. I want to share with you a, a little story written by Harold Sen B. The, entitled The Care of Souls, Cultivating a Pastor's Heart. And he shares of this personal experience with someone serving them communion. It's entitled Death and Life in Your Hands. Roberta was clearly near the end of her very long journey of life towards and heading towards death door. Roberta's cancer was a particularly nasty variety and by now it had eaten its way into her vital organs and the scarf concealed her balding head for silent testimony to the radical regime of chemotherapy her body had endured in a vain attempt to stave off death. She extended a weak hand and a wan smile to greet her pastor. 
Her skin was pasty and cold to the touch, and her breasts labored and shallow. And though her eyes were losing their luster, she gladly, eagerly heard the word of God, clinging to every symbol. Would you like the Lord's Supper? I asked. Oh, yes, she answered in her weak little voice. We launched into the timeless ritual of all the faithful throughout earthly pilgrimage, all lifelong culminates, culminates in the marriage supper of the Lamb and his kingdom. So that dreary winter afternoon from a makeshift bedside table set squarely in the valley of the shadow of death, Roberta received a foretaste of the eternal feast still yet to come. Our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed, I began, consecrating the tiny bit of bread I thought she might be able to swallow, together with a, a miniature chalice with its little sip of wine. These would be for her the very flesh and blood of Jesus, the sign and seal of her redemption and the promised resurrection of her worn and dying body. In this sacred meal, Roberta would obtain not merely forgiveness, but also life in all its fullness, already here and now on the very brink of death. But then a logistical problem. How commune someone who could no longer lift her head? Gingerly slipping onto the edge of her bed, I gently wrapped one arm beneath her frail bony shoulders and lifted her feathery light torso, cradling her like some skeletal baby. With my other hand, I placed in her mouth the gifts her Savior died to bring, the bread of heaven here on earth, the cup of salvation poured out for all the world. Take eat the body of Christ given for you, I said. Take, take drink this blood, of shed, this blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Then a parting blessing with the sign of the cross traced on her ashen forehead with my thumb. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and in soul until life ever ask, everlasting. Depart in peace. And she did. Not right then, but many, not many days later, we gathered to give thanks for all our Lord's many mercies and to celebrate his grace. And then to commit Roberta's body to the ground, earth to earth, dust to dust. But that day there in Roberta's apartment, as I packed up my communion case and bade farewell to her family and friends, keeping vigil with her, one of them said admiringly, you had death in your hands here today. I'm not sure how I responded then, but here's what I, I should have said. Maybe so but I also had life in my hands to bring. That's what it means to be a, a servant of Christ. You get your hands dirty uh, among his earthly and earthy people, but you do it because you have life in your hands to give. Because you have life in your hands to give. The communion symbols are truly signs of life that we are given to feed us, to sustain us, to empower us to be the hands and love of Christ in this struggling and hurting world. Take strength from him to be the strength for others. And as we prepare to come to our Lord's table, when the plate or the bread is put in your hands today, think quietly, Jesus himself is, is giving me this bread. He is the host of this meal. This is his gift. This is a sign of his love and his embrace to you. Using the hands of the person serving you, Christ passes the bread and wine to you because he wants to have communion with you and because he wants to reassure you of his love. He offers you an invitation to taste and see that the Lord is good. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Andrew, could you get the uh, fairness for me from the entranceway? Thank you. We come to a time of, of prayer now. Let us pray. Just and merciful God, we lift our eyes to you in hope and gratitude. When the world around us seems troubling, we are grateful for your steadfast love. Thank you for your spirit at work in all times and places, calling out the best in your people, showing us when we must repent, opening paths to reconciliation where we have offended. May we seek your justice and know your mercy. We pray for justice for the earth. Protect those creatures and habitats that our way of life is threatening. Protect those communities and island nations at risk from climate change. And we pray for the many who are suffering from the brutal storms that we have, we have had. Open our eyes to see how we can live more responsibly and change our hearts to know we must. We pray for justice among the nations. Create more generous sharing of resources between countries with good harvests and those depleted by famine. Where there is aggression and intimidation between nations, raise up the willingness to make peace and settle differences fairly. God, we all need healing of some kind in our lives. We remember before you those struggling with illness of body, mind, or spirit, those waiting for a diagnosis or treatment, those who are going through a treatment, all those whose health challenges are invisible to others. We include prayers for, for Sharon, for other family members from this congregation who are, who are ill because of COVID and, and, and other illnesses. We keep them in our prayers. We pray for Kathy, for the Spry family, for Burry and Norma and those that we name quietly in the silence of our prayers. The many experiencing difficulty following Hurricane Fiona, Hurricane Ian and other disasters, situations of flood and famine and so forth. Lord God, your spirit prays within us even when we cannot find the right words. So hear us this day and answer us in ways that encourage our faith and can change the world for the good, for the sake of Jesus Christ. When we eat together, we bring together the fragments of our individual lives and experience communion. We move from being separate to being one, and today we recognize the truth we often take for granted. The table and the fragments that become one extend around the world. The table includes those who are right here in Newburgh and those who are gathered around the table in Japan, those who are enjoying a, a pizza bread around the table in Mexico, those who are enjoying a puff pastry around a table in Istanbul. The world is too small for us to imagine these are not our neighbors. And on this World Communion Sunday, we gather around our own table, remembering Jesus' call to love our neighbors and to serve them. And our table circles the globe as we eat this bread and drink this cup, linking arms around the world. Pour your grace into us all. Pour your grace into us all. In Christ we pray. Amen and amen. And as we prepare to come to our Lord's table, let us join our voices together and our Apostles' Creed, our, our statement of faith. This Apostles' Creed is the most ancient and most agreed upon statement of the Church. Let us rise as we offer the statement and then join together in our hymn. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us break bread together. 480, we're on the screen. the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west, from south and north, and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. This is the table not of one denomination, but of one, our one Lord, Jesus Christ. It is made ready for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time. Our Savior invites all those who, who trust in him to share the feast which he has prepared. Jesus invites to us to this table and now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread and this wine, ordinary things of the world, and these Jesus has promised to be present through Jesus Christ can make us whole. Come all of you. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. As Jesus offered thanks for the gifts of the earth, let us also bless God with great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, you are source of all that exists. You are beyond the galaxies, deeper than the oceans. You pour down rain and bring forth the fruit of the earth. You carry us through deep waters and hold us in the darkest night. 
So with all your creatures, great and small, with angels and archangels, with saints and servants in every generation, we join in the rejoicing of your creation. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power of earth and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy is your Son, Jesus, O God, walking this earth, feeding the hungry, calling the lost, noticing the forgotten, healing those who, who reached out, teaching those who sought wisdom. He revealed your kingdom in our midst. Today we thank you for all Jesus shared with us to show us that you are always with us in times of plenty and in times of pain. And so we celebrate the mystery of our faith in him, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Holy God, when the sounds of our rejoicing fall silent, we remember those who cannot rejoice today, who face times of pain or feel or, of, or fear or upheaval. We think especially of those whose countries have been overwhelmed by earthquake, flood and storm, by conflict, drought or famine. draw near to them in the power of the Spirit, to strengthen and sustain them through Christ's compassion and ours. Holy Spirit, come and, and settle on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. May they become for us Christ's body and lifeblood, healing, forgiving, and making us whole. So may we become Christ's body, the church, loving and caring throughout the whole world until that day when all creation feasts with you in the fullness of your mercy and peace. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, your spirit be upon us and upon these elements as we commune together now. Amen. The table is ready. The bread of Christ, broken for you. The bread of Christ, broken for you. the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat and feed on him by faith in your hearts. Amen. Amen. 
Christ, the true vine. Jesus Christ, the true vine. Let us join our voices and our hearts together in the prayer after communion. Loving God, Christ our Lord, Holy Spirit, you have nourished us body and soul in this meal. We have heard your love, so send us out to speak it. We have seen your love, so send us out to show it. We have been fed, fed by your love, so send us out to share it. And let all things be done for your glory. Amen. Amen. Today it is so good not only to hear the voices of our choir, but to see them. We have received from our Lord's table, now we have the privilege to share. Around the Lord's table we celebrate God's generosity to us in Christ and in creation. We present our offerings in gratitude for all God has given. Our offering will now be received.
together in the prayer. God, you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. Our gifts may not be perfect, but bless them with your Holy Spirit to spread your goodness in the world. For the sake of Christ, our living Lord. Amen. And our hymn to take us forth comes from our book of praise this morning. For the bread which you have broken, 549 and on the screen. Amen. 